Okay, well, let's get to uh, Craig Carmichael. He's going to talk about the life of Titan. Okay, I've uh, come to talk about life on Titan, but first, uh, uh, some people have seem to have expressed interest in an update on my electric hubcap uh, car motor project that I talked about last year. So I'm going to spend about one minute on that. I've improved the motors. They're easier to make or produce. They'll be 95% efficient. And I'm having uh, motor making workshops. If anyone wants one, see me. And I hope to have kits for making the whole motor this year. The torque converter is much closer to working, but it's not there yet. Um, I've just recently been thinking outside the box. And I've come up with another motor. I call it the electric wheel. It will be a 26-inch diameter. All the torque elements are around the rim. It'll have fantastic torque. It'll drive a car wheel directly with no torque converter, no gears, nothing. And uh, it uses the same parts as the other motors, which is helpful. And I think it's the future of car design. So you've got this great big 26-inch wheel with magnets all around and uh, the uh, coils in the other part. Okay, now <laughs> on to my main topic, uh, life on Titan. And uh, I, I feel uh, a bit like uh, the little kid saying the emperor has no clothes because it's so obvious, and yet none of the scientists are saying anything about it, and they're not offering any alternative explanations about what we're seeing. So Titan is uh, a, a planet that's uh, most like the Earth in the whole solar system. It orbits Saturn. In size, it's between Mercury and Mars. Okay, go down a screen. So, uh, a few Titan stats. It's uh, it it orbits at Saturn every 16 days, so its day is uh, once every or 16 Earth days, and it, it's like the Earth in that it has an atmosphere with about the same pressure as the Earth, but it's very alien because it's really cold, and it has seas and lakes and rivers and rain, but it's liquid methane instead of water. Um, gravity one seventh of the Earth, and uh, the air, lakes, rivers. We'll get down to my uh, next point. Well, it's 30 Earth years. Go down. There's a map there, and now the liquid methane on Titan. Titan has tremendous tides that are caused by orbiting closer to Saturn and then farther away. And of course, as it gets closer to Saturn, the liquid wants to rise up. And it basically has one face that faces Saturn and one that faces away. And the, so the tides actually go to those two points that you might call the Saturn pole and the anti-Saturn pole. And uh, those, uh, so the liquid all flows that way. And also as it gets close to Saturn, the libration takes it back and forth. 60 kilometers, so it gets washed like a washing machine and pulled this direction, and as it goes away from Saturn, it goes the other direction. So what you find is uh, almost predictable. There are four seas at the equator. <laughs> They're at zero degrees long lat longitude and uh, 100, 270, 180, and 90 degrees, and they uh, uh, there's channels that flow between them. And uh, why those take a north and a south, I'm not sure, but they all do. And so this also carries sediment that uh, moves Titan gradually around. It doesn't always face one face to Saturn like everything else does, because the silt keeps getting moved around and changes its center of gravity. So it actually makes one rotation relative to Titan uh, every thousand Earth years. And so in 500 years, the side that's facing away from Saturn now will face the uh, towards Saturn. And uh, you say, well, why didn't the scientists notice some of this stuff? And uh, go to another screen. I've, I've got a bunch of reasons. Oh, there's some, some of the flow, silt flow from the Cassini imager and from the Huygens lander that's uh, oriented this way. It's flowing from uh, west to east. 
and the next screen, why didn't the scientists see some of this stuff? And there's a bunch of reasons that I don't have time to get into. Um, so go to up another one. Um, if we go up, put these, center these here. Uh, these are some of the images from the Huygens lander. These are the real raw images. Then what's been done is they've been contrast enhanced. Con the contrast has been magnified. Now this is one I did with the contrast magnified 300% for all of them. So the dark looks darker and the light looks lighter. What they've done is contrast enhanced them by uh, inconsistent amounts and uh, un unknown amounts. And what you have here that looks like a liquid with few features dimly seen under it, over here, what is that? Nobody can tell. And they've presented those right-hand ones as being the raw images. And I think they've fooled the whole science community as well as the public. And uh, another thing that makes it obvious that it's liquid is that it gradually gets darker as you're looking more downward, the same as it does on Earth in liquid. That isn't a characteristic of land. So uh, moving right along to the life, or okay, there's, there's another example of contrast enhancement. These are tide pools. There's the original picture. And if you make it black and white with heavy contrast magnification, you have no idea that there's liquid there. Okay, next. And uh, now getting, okay, keep going, keep going. Here's, I've pinpointed where the Huygens landed right here. The uh, science community has yet to place these last three lowest elevation images. Up. <laughs> we don't have much time, so life. Okay, there's lots of spectrographic evidence. If they had seen almost any of this stuff on Mars that they're seeing on Titan, they'd have been jumping up and down and it'd be in the headlines, Mars is alive, it has life. But when uh, it's on Titan, where they weren't expecting to see life, no amount of evidence is enough to... And uh, so the next thing is, what do you see when you uh, look for, when you, to look for life on a world? Well, you think of, you know, animals, Carl Sagan put, animals in the desert and photograph them from the air to see what could be seen. But if you look down at the earth and you look at the Amazon rainforest, you don't see monkeys and birds, you see a forest canopy. The vegetation is huge compared to the animals. And uh, so that's what you see is vegetation. And then you say, well, how, what kind of vegetation would we see on Titan? And the answer is really big vegetation because it's one-seventh gravity. Trees can only grow so tall on Earth because of the gravity. You work it out, it's 120 meters, roughly, for the tallest trees. And on Titan, if you use the same formulas with one-seventh gravity and liquid methane instead of water, trees can grow to over a kilometer tall. And they do. So uh, here's... And uh, there's aquatic vegetation on a scale that's completely unknown on Earth. Uh, where Huygens came down is in the duny tropical seas. I forgot to mention those tides ripping back and forth create dunes, which uh, uh, are actually under the liquid. And here, so here's uh, the Im an image composed of many of the images of the lander that as it parachuted down, it was turning. So it, it took all these pictures. And scientists thought this was an island at first before they decided that none of it was liquid and uh, thought these were rivers and things. And, uh, but you look at them and they're, they're not like rivers, they're like, like branches and leaves and that's exactly what they are. Uh, you look at this one, there's a, a root comes from up here, the stem goes up here, it goes along here and along here, and it has what look like sessile leaves coming off, straight off the trunk there. And then the lower level image, you can see it's elevated up above the rest of the terrain. And this is another thing they said, is it's uh, incredibly, uh, you know, huge terrain. And this leaf here is casting a clear shadow on the water. It's a huge leaf. And uh, so then the next picture is uh, from the ground. And they're calling these rocks, and yet there's stems and uh, things. And you can clearly see stems and leaves. Now, this wasn't very clear in the original images, but it's more clear in with processed images. And uh, if you look at the uh, land areas, 
the radar images are clearly showing forest that looks, it gives the same pattern as earth forests and you can't really say that it looks like anything but forest and uh, the last thing is uh, a radar image and uh, I gave this, I emailed this to a professional cartographer who looks at satellite images of the earth every day and I didn't tell him it was Titan, I just said, what do you make of it? And he said, well, it's mixed forest and a shallow lake with, uh, wow. it looks like vegetation growing out of the lake and, the, and it looks like the water would come in here and go out there. You know? And then he was trying to guess what satellite had taken it and he was perturbed because he couldn't figure it out. So I eventually, of course, told him it was Titan and that threw him for a loop and it was the Cassini. And uh, I think there's one more image, but it, no, sorry, the, the, it didn't get on the web, but it's uh, uh, just a landscape and you can see all the trees, just forests from the pole down to near the equator where the seas take over. And that's my take on life on Titan. Yeah.